I'm Nancy Burke, the outgoing president, vice president of ISPS US, and I want to welcome you all to the second day of ISPS US 2020, Love and Justice in Engaging with Psychosis in Extreme States. There are so many people to thank now. I just want to mention a few, Ellen and the committee and uh, our presidents, past, present, and future, uh, Jess and Claire, uh, and uh, Hallie, who has done an amazing job with the volunteers, and of course, Karen Stern, as always. I hope you feel like me, that, and despite the tough technical difficulties and physical distances that have hindered us at this year's conference, that ISPS is an essential home, not only for those experiencing psychosis and for those of us accompanying them as best we can on their healing journeys, but more generally for humanity itself. This year, more than ever, everything is at stake in our building communities in which our individual and shared experiences find not only a respite from the world, but the substance from which we can create it. Yesterday, Chaku Mathai reminded us of the importance of exchanges of meaning and purpose, and Francoise Devoin spoke of the power of our stories to heal and create us, body and mind. And I don't need to tell you that there are two sides to every story. There's the telling and the listening. Regarding one form of he healing among the many we draw from, the psychoanalyst Adam Phillips noted that calling psychoanalysis a talking cure has obscured the sense in which it is a listening cure. Being listened to, he tells us, can enable one to hear and even to enjoy listening to oneself and others. And we could say that it is this, listening, which love and justice themselves depend on. So we're here both to tell stories and to listen to them, and there are some wonderful ones lined up for you today. In addition to the presentation by our honoree, Michael Garrett, there are two plenary pl panels brimming with stories to be told and heard, as well as papers in the breakout rooms, posters, a roundtable discussion at 1230, and you could meet with Windhorse, and then there's going to be a wrap up by Zoom. But in the meanwhile, we wanna take a few minutes to honor some of those who have made our community what it is. Marie Brown, the chair of our awards committee, will take it from here. Marie. Beginning in 2018, ISPS US presented two awards to members of the organization who have demonstrated consistent service to ISPS. The Christian Mueller Award for an individual who has shown service to ISPS US for 10 years or less, and the Gaetano Benedetti Award for someone who has demonstrated a lifetime or legacy commitment to ISPS US. Individuals are nominated each year by ISPS membership and are voted on by the awards committee. This year, we are pleased to award three people. The winner for this year's Christian Mueller Award is Pat Wright. Pat is a parent, educator, and tireless advocate for families of people with psychosis in extreme states. She holds a master's degree in education from the University of Minnesota. Pat has been working in the field of disability rights since 2001, herself having experienced the poverty and inequities that come with physical health disabilities. After a family member experienced psychosis, she brought the knowledge to the field of mental health. Since joining ISPS US in 2012, Pat has worked tirelessly to make the organization more relevant and welcoming for family members. She has been instrumental in bringing family members in through her work on the family committee and through organizing conference plenaries that center the voices of caregivers who are too often excluded in mainstream care. Pat is exemplary of an individual that possesses the ability to transform their pain into meaningful action, truly a person that exists at the intersection of love and justice. I cannot imagine a more appropriate person to receive the Mueller Award for this year's conference. On behalf of the ISPS US Awards Committee, congratulations, Pat Wright. Mm. Thank you so much, Marie. I feel so honored to be here today. This is um, just makes my heart sing. I knew I had to find my tribe when my son was first hospitalized several years ago. I live in uh, Minnesota, as um, we heard, 
And uh, it's a very conservative place in many ways. We've got uh, Mayo dominating in the backyard with the University of Minnesota. Uh, so the uniqueness of ISPS holding a space for people with lived experience, family members, and providers is very special to me, and I know many others. We are a role model organization to other organizations that are um, either just for providers or maybe family members or even people with lived experience. But I think it's so courageous for all of us to come together and hear each other's challenges. And in this way, we can truly create a better world for those who struggle with extreme states. Thanks also to my family members, both the family members in my personal family, family of origin, as well as family members that I've met through ISPS. And um, I don't think I'd be here without the, uh, the generous support of people in this organization along the way, and particularly Jessica that invited me to help expand the family voice several years ago when we were at an international conference. I had no idea what, what even that meant, but um, you know, I found out and, and have just been taking it as it comes and learned so much and feel like I'm such a better family member um, to those in my family that um, struggle with extreme states. So thank you everybody and have a better day today. Then thank you, Maria. I can tell you're an excellent researcher because all that was true, but I know I didn't tell you any of it. So good job. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jessica Arnell, past president of ISPS US, and I'm really happy to be here today to introduce uh, Ronald Abramson, who is receiving uh, one of the Benedetti Awards. Um, I've been a part of ISPS for a couple of decades now, and Ron has been here as long as I can remember, always being a very humble, uh, yet very powerful president presence in the organization, running the um, Boston area group faithfully uh, for, for decades, uh, presenting at our conferences, doing the incredible job of organizing not just one, but two co um, conferences in the Boston area. And for any of the, you who have helped organize conferences, you know that, you know, one can be enough. So, um, and they were fabulous conferences. I remember them both quite fondly. Ron has written dozens of articles. Uh, he came out with, with a book. Um, he, he's published um, in the Journal of American Journal of Psychiatry about um, humane ways and psychotherapy for psychosis. And I think one of, you know, um, I think with Ron, what makes him so persistent, consistent, and, and humble is his belief that he is just practicing psychiatry the way a humane, ethical person should, should do it. And that's the way that the practice should be. Um, and he's been plugging away and doing that and been a very valuable member of our organization for, for many years. Uh, another um, amazing memory I have of Ron is um, presenting with one of his patients. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about dial dialogue and dialogic treatment and all these different things. Uh, but Ron was one of the first people just to get up there and have a conversation on equal terms, sharing his, sharing the platform and having his patient also tell her version of the treatment and the story in her own life and not just have it from the clinician's point of view and to show and share that dialogue in front of everybody. Um, and I think these examples just really kind of show the person that Ron has been. Um, Ron's been through a lot in the last year, physically and all that, um, and, um, you know, recently got to the hospital, so I'm really pleased. I wasn't sure he was going to be able to show up uh, virtually, and uh, so I'm so just so happy and tickled to see Ron here today, um, and if there was a Mensch Award, we give him that too. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Paul Abramson. Thanks. Hi. Uh when I got the call that uh, about the Benedetti Award, it's a good thing I was sitting in a wheelchair because otherwise I might have fallen down. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> and hearing myself described, um, it uh, is way beyond my own self-concept, which is um, I feel like I'm just sort of ticking along. Anyway, I want to make a few uh, remarks, and I realize I'm, I'm restricted to uh, two minutes. Um, I got into ISPS um, hearing about it from Ann Silver. She and I had some sort of dialogue. I don't remember what it was. Um, uh, through the American Psychoanalytic Association. And I have loved being in ISPS and the people in it and the whole um, approach to uh, therapy. Um, one of the things that's not recognized um, in psychiatry is that there is a difference between objectively seeing uh, nerve cells do something and the experience of what it feels like um, to experience something going around you, the, um, the subjective experience. Uh, and as I've done my thinking over the years, I've got to a point where I realize that subjectivity is a fundamental property of the universe. I won't go too much further than that because that sounds a little too far out. But the whole struggle that we have that no one else seems to bother to do is to understand the subject, the, the nature of what people who get psychotic experience. Uh, I try to do that a lot. Often I fail uh, because I think the person is too suspicious to, uh, to let me in. Um, but sometimes I succeed, as with this patient, uh, she and I, uh, presented one day at a meeting uh, that's been, um, uh, uh, I like this one a lot. She's still uh, functioning well. I see her uh, once a month or so. Um, there was an article in Science this week about subjectivity in birds and uh, that they have a brain structure similar to that in mammals. Therefore, they experience something subjective. That's the kind of thing I object to because nobody understands the least thing about how something in the brain, some activity in the brain, translates into something somebody might feel. That is not understood at all, and boy, I'd love to understand that. Uh, let me just say again, I love my experience. I, I just love the people in ISPS. I nearly fell down when I heard I got the award. I'd still hear myself described. It's like, what? Is this me? Um, and um, by the way, the title of my little book is called The Trouble with Modern Psychiatry. Uh, if you want to read what I think about that. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, and um, and I guess that's all I can think of right now. Uh, bye now. I'm delighted to present a, a Benedetti Award to Anne Louise Silver, MD, who was the founding president of ISPS US, having served for a marathon record of 10 years in that role. She was on staff at Chestnut Lodge, which was a beacon for psychoanalytic work with people with psychosis for 25 years and served as its director of education for nearly that entire time. She's written on the lives and works of Harry Stack Sullivan, Frieda Fromm Reichman, and Harold Searles, among others. She's a teaching analyst at the Washington Center for Psychoanalysis on the faculty of the Washington School of Psychiatry and the founder of the Columbia Academy for Psychodynamics. She is in the private practice of psychoanalysis and psychiatry, and it's a personal honor for me to present this award to her because she's been an extraordinary and much valued mentor and supervisor to me during my analytic training, for whose bold insight and friendship I will be truly forever grateful. Dr. Bertram Karen represented the heart and soul of ISPS and inspired generations of psychotherapists to defy the prevailing belief that people with psychosis could not be helped through psychoanalytic psychotherapy. <clears throat> he was a valued colleague, 
mentor, teacher, friend, and therapist to many in our organization and touched many more through his writings. ISPS US has chosen to honor Dr. Karen's towering contributions by creating an annual award for the presentation at an ISPS US conference that best exemplifies his humane and spirited quest to promote psychotherapy for psychosis. In this, the inaugural year of the award, the Karen Award will be bestowed upon two longtime colleagues of Burt's, Francoise Davoin for her timely and inspiring essay on the birth of a political subject, and James Gorney for his warm and moving paper, So What Does Love Have to Do With It? On behalf of the Karen Award Committee, I offer my thanks for these contributions, as well as for the other excellent papers submitted for ISPS US 2020.